Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Well, you know me, I like to start off with a funny story. Um, so I don't know if everyone knows, but I used to work at Ralph's grocery store. Hey. All right, cool, thanks. Small beginnings, guys, thank you. Um, no, but on my name tag, well, I didn't even say I spoke Spanish, but they just naturally gave me a name tag that said, hablo espanol. <laughs> so I was like, all right, like, cool. So <laughs> the funny thing was is that people didn't think I spoke any English. <laughs> so I'm all bagging groceries, and then, like, people, like, like <laughs> okay, so I'm, like, 18 here. And then they're going on their knee like this. Gracias. I was like, what the? You know, but, but here's the funny thing, though. <laughs> like, it started paying off where they would actually tip me because I guess, like, you know, like, I only spoke. So I took it, and I would, I would, de nada, de nada, de nada. I would totally milk that, okay? So I was like, I'm speaking Spanish while I'm bagging, okay? If it brings me a dollar extra on my paycheck, it is worth it. What's that to do with this message? Nothing. Um, you, do, you, you know me if you come. I just like to do random stuff. But see, I'm in a different season now. I'm not working there anymore. No name tag that says hablo espanol. Um, you know, but I love this new season now because I work here now at the church. Um, it's been awesome. I got to take over for Pastor Anthony. Pastor Anthony, you're an amazing man. I love you. I don't know how you did it. Um, God, God gave you grace, and God's teaching me grace. But you know what? Being able to work at the church, I get to see you know, a lot behind the scenes, and I've come to the conclusion that our church is going into a new season, yeah. you know, a new season of influence, a new season of growth, you know, and, you know, I was talking to Pastor Bruce, because that dude is so wise, um, and I was like, man, I feel like our church is, like, going into a new direction, it's going into a new thing, and he's like, yeah, my church too, and then, you know, he was using bomb illustrations, so I was like, okay, like, think of one, Isaac, think of one, think of one, um, <laughs> No, but I, I, you know, we were talking about his kids, and then I was like, you know what, like, with growth, like his kids, when your kids get older, that means, you know, you're not going to give your 15-year-old his one-year-old shirt, you know what I mean? Like, because they grow out of it, and that means you have to, to get rid of that shirt, you know, and that's what it means, like, with us as a church as we grow, because sometimes that means we got to have some growing pains, that means we got to get rid of some things in our lives. That means that, yeah, it may be cute, we love holding on to it, but we got to let it go. You know, I'm trying to help my mom with that because she still has my cabbage patch shirt from when I was, like, in first grade. She refuses to throw that thing away. It's still in my drawer. Not even a lie. It is, it's in my bottom drawer, this cabbage patch shirt. I'm like, Mom, it's, it's gone now. I'm 20, all right? Let it go. You know, but that's, that's what happens with growth. And you know what? I realize that in growth, there's some growing pains, but it also means that you just got to realize that you're jacked up. You're jacked up. If you want to grow, you got to realize that you're jacked up. I'm jacked up. I got some issues, okay? And I know a lot of people, you know, they say, like, hey, like, you know, I've said it before, like, how are you? They never say anything negative about their life. And I'm saying, I'm not saying be negative, but come on. Give me some, like, me about your life. Well, I'm blessed. Nothing's wrong here. Just pursuing God, you know, prayer warrior. I'm like, dude, I just asked you how your work was. <laughs> Um, just getting people saved over and over again. But that's what I'm saying, though. You got to get to the point where you realize you're jacked up. I'm jacked up. Uh, Alexis is definitely jacked up. Uh, I mean, I could go down the list, but uh, Alexis has just got a lot of things. We, we put her back there because we don't like to show how jacked up she is with the lighting here. She's all over in the back. She's not in her head. I can say that while I'm up here. Um, no, but we're all jacked up, some more than others. Maybe you're sitting with one of them right now. Just, 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 give me, just give me the nod, and I'll see it up here. No one has to see it. But seriously, like, we're all jacked up. We all are struggling with things. We're all at different places in our lives. And I think the sooner that we figure that out and realize that we can be okay with that, um, I think we'll grow even faster. You just got to get over you. Because most of the time, we're in our own path. Like, we're blocking ourselves from growing with God. Um, and I, I just love... Oh, shoot, I thought I almost fell. Um, I was like, there's a little dip here. And I was like, ah. um, but I realized that I was jacked up as I was coming into ministry as well because I'm a very cutthroat person. I'm like, hey, like, I mean, I love your feelings, but I'm going to tell you how it is. And that I realized that doesn't work with everybody. <laughs> so, you know, God's putting me in a season of, hey, like, I need to work on some things. And ministry has definitely grown me 
a lot. Like in ways where I felt like I kind of didn't want to. Like my dad had to sit me down and say, like, hey man, like you're cutthroat. Like you're, you're worse than me. <laughs> I was like, thanks dad. <laughs> um, no, but I need to grow and I need to change. And I realized that in order for us to grow as a church, that means we all got to get on board with the growing train, with the changing train. And it's not always the funnest train to be on. There's a lot of bumps in the road. There's a lot of difficulties along the path. But trust me, it's for the benefit of yourself. Um, And not only that, but once you know you're jacked up, you got to know that you need some help. Who, who, Who needs some help here tonight? Point at the person who needs some help here tonight. Don't, don't do that. Okay, one person did it. I saw, I saw right there. He's like, very bold. All right. No, but we all need some help, right? So, like, when I was in school, I was a jacked up student, okay? I'm, I'm smart. I can say I'm smart, I think. Um, but in school, like, I hated it, and I would never ask for help. And my parents would always ask me, like, hey, how's, how's school going? I'm like, good, good. Yeah, it's great. And my mom would always know. Like, she'd be like, and then, but, but I'd be talking to my dad, and I see her look in the background. And then, because she, she'd always check my grades. Like, I used to throw away my report cards when they would come in. Like, I knew the date. Like, I would ask my teachers, like, hey, you know what? My parents are asking when the report card's supposed to come in. Oh, okay, Isaac, it's coming in, blah, blah, blah. So I would, like, throw it away. But I never would ask for help. But then guess who got whooped near the end of the semester? <laughs> Your boy. I would... Woo, I get whooped. Uh, my dad is not only a pastor, but he is, like, professional be- whooper. He, yeah, like, the tattoo that he has, like, he put the same one on my back growing up. Uh, like, damn, like, that's a samurai, too. Um, no, but if you don't ask for help, how are you going to, like, get better? You need to ask for help. And that's why we have a Savior, and his name is Jesus, and he's willing to help you. But the, but the ironic thing is that we never ask for help. We become saved by Jesus, but who, we all know this. Like, just because you get saved doesn't mean all the problems run away. You just get more problems, more problems, more adversity. Because he never promised it was going to be easy. But all of us think, oh, and like, I'm good. I just got Jesus now. I don't need to worry about going back to him again. I don't got to worry about encounters with him again. I don't got to worry about all that. But then you're stressed out, and you're burnt out. And then you're like, hey, like, I don't know if I can do this God thing anymore. When God's asking, like, hey, I don't know if you're doing this, this thing with me anymore. Because the moment you stop asking for help, the relationship pretty much is at a standstill. Because in a relationship, there's some twists and turns. But if you're not trying to come together and trying to make something happen with it, that relationship is pretty much dead. So what's the next step? You need an encounter with Jesus. You need an encounter. So you know you need help. Or, you, well, you know you're jacked up. You need help. Now get the encounter. All right, so... I had a Christian club when I was in high school, right? And this is how we advertised it. We just called it the movement. And, like, it was pretty much our, like, word of mouth was like, hey, like, you know, life's pretty much jacked up. We just talk about life being jacked up. Classes, teachers, kind of like all that, like, of how hard it can be. And, yeah, like, we have an answer that can help you guys. It was amazing, the turnout. Okay, the first day, though, no. There was, like, four people. And that was four people were me, my friend, the teacher, and just the other volunteer we had. So <laughs> pretty much nobody. Um, but we started talking about it more, just living out our life, saying, like, hey, like, I'm going through some things. High schoolers go through some things, man. That's drama. My God. That's, they should add another class just for drama, man, that happens in between. So we would just, like, we would advertise, you know, the, the drama that's happening. Like, come get a place where you can just chill. We were packing out almost 100 kids in a classroom. And there was no 30-minute messages, no worship. We legit talked for 5 to 10 minutes, and we just had some pizza. Okay? Nothing special about it. But what we were offering was something that they, didn't, they couldn't get on their own, and that was an encounter. Like, let me tell you how crazy it was. Like, our faith was so out there with just 5 to 10 minutes. We would start praying over people. This girl who had a spinal issue where she had to walk like this, she got healed, and she was able to walk normally. Like, in just, like, five minutes of just praying for her. And these are Buddhists praying, too. Like, we didn't just have, like, Christians. It wasn't just a Christian thing. Like, we got Buddhists to get on board. Like, hey, let's just, let's just pray in the name of Jesus. Let's just try it out. And then they would do it. And people would get healed just from people who had no idea who Jesus was. Right? But that, that, that's our God, though. You know, that's what happens when, you know, you get an encounter. And I remember one day 
there's a guy, he's like, man, like, you know, I, I want this Jesus thing, but like, I feel empty. And I was like, man, you need the Holy Spirit, man. I got exactly what you need. But the funny thing was, is that like class was about to end out and it was at like the end of the day and we were at like the front of the school. So like, there's about to be like a thousand some kids that are coming out. And I was like, dude, you want it or not? Like, like God's ready for you. Like we can keep on waiting, but I think this is a bomb place. So me and a couple guys, we came and we prayed for him and all school's letting out and thousands of people like, well, all the students are looking at us like we're stupid. Right, but that kid's getting filled with the spirit like that. And he's starting to speak in tongues right in front of like all these students and people are looking at us weird. And then other students would join in kind of watching, you know, and then that's how we just build a movement. That's what that's what we call it. But it was pretty much just based upon the hey, we're all jacked up. You know, we all need some help and we need an encounter. It's as simple as that. And I think, you know, if if high schoolers can do it. If high schoolers can do it. <laughs> Let that sink in. Because some of us are grown adults and say, you know, oh, I'm a prayer warrior. You know, and then you're, you're worshiping, you know, and you're giving your all, but then you still don't know how to give God anything? Like, who's the better? I would say the student who knows barely lick about God. He knows more about the concept of God than you. And you come almost every Sunday and Wednesday. Ooh, that's a challenge, huh? And the, and the funny thing is when I'm writing this, I was like, dang, like, God, like, give me a message for people, not me, man. Shoot, convicted brother. I'm like crying and right, <laughs> you know. But it's that's, this is for me too because I need to grow and I need to be upfront with God and be like, hey, I need another encounter. When did it say in the Bible that one encounter was enough? It, even the prophets would go from the holies of holies to holies to holy. Like they would go on new levels with God. When did we say that it was okay to be surface level? Right? Because if we want change in this church, we want to fill out every single seat. That means we need to grow a little bit more. That means we need to get a little bit uncomfortable. And you know what? Uh, I think a good example of that is um, in the Bible, you know the story of the woman at the well? You know how they talk about that one? You know, I love that one. And I was reading with my team just the book of John uh, for my youth team. Because I want us to get to know who Jesus is again. And we tell a lot of you know, people who are just coming to Jesus to read the book of John. So I was like, hey, why don't we just do it again? And let's pray every single day that God speaks to us something new. And we've been doing it, and we've been seeing such a change in our youth ministry. You know, usually after camps, um, you know, that's when you get the big turnout numbers, and then it kind of dwindles again. Last week, we had almost 70, you know, and that was on a school night, right, just packed out, right? And that's just from getting people to read the Bible, man, kids. It's like, let's just do a chapter a day. Some of them fell asleep, you know, what they do. But, like, hey, at least they tried four sentences um no but but god's you know he can change through any part of your life but um can we put on my first scripture because trust me it's going to go with the woman at the well you'll see it first scripture boom all right therefore since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith let us strip off every weight that slows us down especially the sin that so easily trips us up and let us run with endurance the race god has set before us all right so you want to get rid of some baggage in order for you to go higher with God? That means you got to get a little bit rid of you, your excuses, everything you say. Oh, yeah, but, you know, I, I, I want to get closer to God, but I know Elevate Church is offering a prayer thing, but I don't want to wake up at that time. <laughs> Do you want it? No. It sounds, the thought of Jesus and the thought of getting higher with him sounds better, right? But you don't want to put in the work, right? I want to be, I want to be a millionaire. I want, I want millions. I want a G wagon. It's like, bro, you, you spend like your check on food alone. Like you're not even saving. Like, come join FPU, guys. It's life changing. Okay, so that'll really help you. Just plug in that. Yeah, FPU. Woo! I see who the savers are in this house. <laughs> All right. Um, but no, but but that's that's people like, oh, I want I want I want my business to be booming. But like, you don't care about marketing. Right, you want you want to want to have a six pack, you know, like me, like this. This is a six pack, right? Um, no, but no, it's not. Trust me, no, no, it ain't. Uh, it rolls out into a twelve pack after you know, in the shower. So, um, no, but people say they want to be fit. I'm like, yeah, man, I'm about to lose forty pounds. I'm like, bro, you just ate at In and Out before you like. We're eating at In and Out right now, <laughs> and it ain't even a lettuce wrap. But like, <laughs> you know, that's a four by four you're eating, dog. Like, no. You know, but I think that happens to a lot of us where we're like, we want to do it. We want to put in the work. We want to get to know God more, but we don't ever put in really any of the effort. 
We just do it in our minds. Like, I'm visualizing. I'm meditating it. I'm seeing. Like that, but that don't do nothing. That really doesn't. Meditate while you're putting in the practice, you know, putting in the work. And that's when I say it becomes actually valuable. But if there's nothing, if you're not letting go of the dead weight, trust me, it's going to weigh you down. And so the woman at the well, we know the story. Um, so pretty much Jesus, he comes out, like, from the desert. He's been walking a lot. And he, like, walks up to this well. There's a woman at it. He's like, yo, can I have some water? Sorry, guys, I'm giving you, like, the fast version. <laughs> um, so that's, like, 13, 14 scriptures long, <laughs> and I'm not going to put that up. Um, but he's pretty much thirsty. He asks the girl, like, hey, I want some water. And then she's like, oh, but, like, why are you talking to me? We're not allowed to talk to each other because there's different class systems in Israel. So they pretty much weren't really able to talk to each other. Like, because I guess where he was, he was too better than her to even talk to someone that low. But, you know, Jesus, my brother right there. And he's all talking to her, right? And then he's like, hey, like, I can offer you water that, like, will never make you thirsty again. And then she's like, what? Like, give me that water, dog. Like, I'm at the well right now. <laughs> all late. I already got up some water and <laughs> just telling me this now. Like, she put in all that work just for you to tell me that now. Uh, <laughs> I would have been pissed if I was her. <laughs> Dude, come on. Faster. Come on. Um, <laughs> No, that's jacked up. Uh, no, but uh, so pretty much he's like, all right, like, she's like, Dan, like, give me this water. And he's like, all right, cool, like, bring your husband. And then she's like, uh, I don't have one. He's like, you're right. You got, like, five, girl. She's like, dang, like, I kept that on low key. Like, you must be God. <laughs> and it says in the scripture because, like, he calls her out on it. I'm like, dang, that, that's all it took? <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> like, you know, because it was on the low key for her and then, you know, finds that out, right? And then, can you guys put up the scripture? Trust me, it sounds all bobble away, but it's going to get better. Go and get your husband. Jesus told her, I don't have a husband. The woman replied, Jesus said, you're right, you don't have a husband, uh, for you have had five husbands, and you aren't even married to the man you're living with now. You certainly spoke the truth, okay? All right, next one. All right. Uh, not the Peter one, last one. It's all right. I'm going to do it from here. Um, but pretty much, she's kind of blown away, and then she's like, wow, you must be the Messiah. You must be like, Jesus, like you must be God. And then she pretty much, I'm just trying to find my sister, guys. Thank you. This is what blows me away. Um, so pretty much at the story, she's pretty much saying like, hey, like, all right, I'm going to go tell everybody now about who this Jesus guy is. right? But specifically in the scripture, it says she left her jar of water. There's always intentionality with everything in scripture. Right? So like, she goes, most people think, oh my God, she got rocked by God and now she's going and letting everyone know the gospel of who Jesus is. But when I was reading this, I was like, what the hell is that jar of water got to do with anything? This is a jar of water. Like, you're just trying to fill the sentence. And I was like, God, like, no, like, it really bothered me what this jar of water meant. And it said that she left it and then went to go tell everybody. And then I realized, I was like, you know what? She not only is getting filled by this new water, but she had to leave what was filling her before. And I was like, what? Yeah, Bloom, I was like, I'm in my room alone. Like, <laughs> But I'm like, imagine if she had taken her water to go with her. It would have slowed her down. It would have made her get slower to where she needed to go. And so many of us, in our walk with God, we still carry that water jug because we haven't chosen to let go of that dream. We haven't chosen to let go of ourselves and admit that we're all jacked up. See, but by her leaving that jug of water, she was saying, you know what, I am jacked up, but I don't need to, I, I give that to God. He, you can have that bucket of water, Jesus. Because they never said he went with her. He stayed there. And then his disciples came, knowing that that water was still there. I bet he drank from it. He's like, oh, yeah, it, it doesn't have what it had before. It's good now. No, but a lot of us are, are carrying that. Like, imagine going through church like this every Sunday. Everyone just walking with buckets of water. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Elevate Church. <laughs> You're at Ibrew. Oh, you want water? Let me get you that. And you, everything would be slow. Imagine my dad preaching up here. Like, hey, guys, how you doing? The whole time holding this. But that's all of us. No wonder you get burnt out with Jesus because you haven't given him at all. This thing's getting you burnt out. You're like, oh, I'm tired. Oh, I don't know if I can serve. 
oh, I don't know if I can give God that thing, you know. It's just life's really tough. It's just everyone else's fault, not mine. Oh, this water thing here? Oh, someone put it here. I'm just holding it for somebody. But come on, guys. Let's, let's just put it down. That's how easy it is to give it to God. Not a 12-step program. It's God, I'm struggling with this. Here you go. It's that simple. But we overcomplicate the gospel. See, she had to let it go so that she could go and tell the city and the town. And then they all came trying to run for Jesus. But imagine how many people she couldn't have reached if she was holding on to this thing. Because imagine she got too tired, she couldn't go up the stairs. She's not going to reach those people. She's going to go to the next, next village, and she's holding this. She's going to take a break. Oh, I need a break, Pastor. Just the way my life's going right now. God's calling me elsewhere. It's like, no, God's been calling you, and you just stopped listening. Oh, I'm preaching today. Mm. Anthony, give me a rag. <laughs> Love you, Pastor Anthony. Hope you're okay with that joke. <laughs> no, but this is how easily entangles us. And this isn't even a lot of water that I put in here. And your issues are like this to God because it's not a lot of water. It's not really big to him. But you make it as if, oh, Dan, like, you're deadlifting 225 pounds of, of crap. And Jesus is like, he could do it just with one hand. Let it go. Let it go. Don't make me sing to you. I'll sing that song. I will sing that song more spiritually than you've ever heard it before. Lexus, get on the piano. Let's go. No, but you got to let it go and let God, right? Not only just let it go. Let it go and go. Go do what God has called you to do. If you want to be an amazing businessman, let go of your dreams and aspirations to him. That's a cuss word for people. Because you're like, i got to let go of my dream? Yes, you got to let it go. Because let the God above take your dream, take your business, and he'll take it to the next level. That's what I'm doing here at the church. That's what we're doing as a staff. Hey, you know, we want to build this church. We want a new building, but God, take the dream. Yes, this is God's church, but we always got to give him every single thing that we put our heart and mind to. And you got to do the same. You're having financial issues? Give it to God, but take the practical steps. Okay, this is a church. We're welcome to help anybody here with whatever you need. Your, your, your problems with family members, we're willing to meet. We're willing to help. There's a home here. We call this a home. So do what is needed in order for you to grow to the next level. If not, really the issue is you. Yes, you may have issues externally, but at the end of the day, look at you because you're not willing to move. You're not. Admit it. Be okay with it. Own up to it. That's what Jesus wanted her to do. She, he made her own up to it. Hey, no, I, I don't have a husband. You're right. You got five. Dang. You're right. Owned up to it. Why do you think he kept that in scripture? For us to get accountability with ourselves and admit that, hey, I'm jacked up. You know, I need help. And I need an encounter. And she got all those three in that one moment. Imagine if you gave God just one moment. You can knock out all those steps. And say it was a four-day four conversation. That was like that. And that's what God can do with you. If you just give him that one moment. Give him your bucket. Give him your bucket of water. It's heavy. I'm not going to do it again because I'm going to sweat. <laughs> but it's going to be ugly when you keep holding on to you. Because when you sweat, it's ugly. You know, you're not going to go sweaty and go take your school pictures on your first day. <laughs> You're not. Your employee picture, like you're drenching. No, you're not going to do that. So what makes you expect for you to go out into whatever you're doing in your business, where you're working, where you're encountering people, and you're always tired? You're always, no one's going to take you seriously, I'll tell you that. Even if you try to like tell people about God, it's like, dang, like, you know God, but your life is like that. I don't want that. That's not my Jesus. My Jesus makes me powerful. Even when I'm hurting, I give it to God, and I give him those pains, and I give him those insecurities, and I'm saying, hey, you make me more than a conqueror. I'm going out into my workplace, and I'm going to let everyone know about Jesus, and I'm going to grow this church. I'm going to grow this vision because I want to see people's lives changed. That's, that's why I'm giving all my, my hurts and pains to God. Trust, trust me, guys. I'm going to be transparent with you. I struggle with a lot of insecurity and self-confidence. And, you know, it's cool. Uh, 
Blair during worship because I was like questioning myself. Uh, I was like, before I get up here, and he's like, he's just like, hey, and that scared me, Loki. Lo- lo- it's like, God? Uh, Blair just got that voice, you know, that accent with him, like, God? And he's like, hey, you are who he says you are. And that was so simple, okay? It wasn't like, oh my God, he dropped like this huge nugget, but it's what I needed. And I, and I told God that, hey, tonight I'm giving you my all, I'm giving you my bucket, and then Blair came. That's how fast God moves when you allow yourself to just be opened up to him and be like, God, pour the blessings. Pour the blessings. So thank you, Blair. You're amazing. And that's what I needed to hear. Because that's what I struggle with constantly. I don't think I'm enough. You and I took this job from Anthony. I'm like, hey, man, I don't think I can do it. <laughs> I still, sometimes I'm like, I don't know if I can do it. But I know that God has equipped me enough yeah. to take it to the next level. And you need to take it to the next level for your personal life. Because God didn't just change her life just so she could be the sold-out prayer Christian. He did it so that her life could be elevated personally. Because you know how you get to that place of where you're sold out fully for Jesus? is when God has completely encountered you and changed your life, and it pushes you to go tell others about it. So God's all about you first. And then he sends you to go to others. Because he wants to brag about you. He's like, dang, this is where your life came from. Show that off. Like, hey, man, I used to be like this, now I'm like this. You got to know this Jesus. And that's how we did it when I was in my club. We were like, hey, we did this, and now we still continually do it at Elevate Church, Elevate Youth, E Kids, E Kids Global. That's who we are. We're we're cool with our faults. We show them. We, we show them. We put. That's what we put forward. Our our worst parts of us, and we let God do the rest. Let God do the rest in you. What do you have to lose, huh? What do you have to lose? That chick, you know, that was at the well. She, what did she have to lose? She gave it all to God. Give it all to him. Just have one moment of boldness in your life right now. Be like, God, I give it to you. God, you're my father. Take control of my life. Those were sporadic clapping. I couldn't help but notice that. I like. I was like, should I say something? No, don't clap. No, no, you already ruined it. You already ruined it. You already don't don't. That's pity clap now. <laughs> you should just you just just golf clap it, man. Like it was like pockets. You know, thank you for those pockets. Um, but I, I, it's just that's what I noticed in my head. I'm like, dang, those were pockets of clap, <laughs> of claps. That was weak. Um, thanks, guys. I'm gonna cry when I get home. Um, no, but I want to just encourage you all. As we're going into this next level as a church, as we're going into this next level as just the children of God, partner with us, get plugged in, get serving. And not only that, but go be a light in this dark world. You know, we were giving out invite cards. Go invite people to church. Let your, light be the, let your life be the gospel because we are Jesus. He, he says we, we are pretty much him. We got him in our DNA, so... You know, I mean, I can tell people about the scriptures, but the best part about me getting people to know about Jesus is telling them about me, what he's done in my life. So get on board. Partner with us. We want to blow up this community. We want to have influence where we can reach anybody, but we can't do it alone. I can't do it alone. You know, Alexis can't definitely do it alone. I love you, Alexis. No, but... We're here together. You know, I bag up my sister, but she's been so pivotal in my life of showing me of, of how much it, it costs to just give Jesus everything. But just seeing the amount of influence that my sister has and just the people that I work with here on staff, the people that I serve with in the helps ministry, you guys motivate me. Even getting to be up here, just seeing all these people, you motivate me to go and be the light. Now, I hope I get to just be a little bit of a motivation to you to go and be the light to other people. Amen. With that, can everyone bow their heads and close their eyes? You know, if that's you today, maybe you don't know about this this Jesus and you want to get to know him, or maybe you've walked away from God and you want to partner with him again and you want to give him your bucket, on the count of three, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. And I'm just going to pray with you, pray for you, um, because we want to see this church and even just see your lives be changed so that others can see it around you. Put that on the count of three. One, don't be scared. Two, I'm here for you. You're not alone. Three, if that's you, please raise your hand. All right, awesome, awesome. You can put your hand down. I'm gonna pray with you. If everyone can repeat after me. Jesus, 
Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Forgive me of all of my sins. Every single one of them. I'm a new creation in you. Thank you for loving me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So church, let's invite people. Let's get people plugged in. Let's go be a light. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.